going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going. We're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for for many workers. In Silicon Valley, and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. Big takeaway, Alexis, is that the uh, plans to taper asset purchases, again, referring to the Fed's pace of $120 billion a month of purchases per month, uh, it really kind of appears to be fleshed out. This is according to the minutes detailing the deliberations that were done in that September 21st and 22nd meeting. So again, this is backwards looking. So any sort of inflation data, employment data that we've gotten since then does not seem to reflect or would not reflect any sort of commentary that we got here. But uh, the details of the FOMC, noting that, quote, participants noted that if a decision to begin tapering purchases occurred at the next meeting, and again, the next meeting is going to be November uh, 2nd and 3rd, the process of tapering could commence with the monthly purchase calendars beginning in either mid-November or mid-December. So the Fed uh, kind of illustrating in these minutes that whenever they do announce that taper, the actual process of slowing its purchases will begin pretty shortly thereafter in a matter of weeks, perhaps. And we're also getting a little bit more detail on how the Fed might do that. It appears to be the case that the preferred path is a $10 billion a month reduction for U.S. Treasuries, $5 billion a month reduction for mortgage-backed securities. But interestingly, they want to leave the option on the table to, quote, adjust the pace of the moderation of its purchases if economic developments were to defer uh, substantially from what they expected. And several of the FOMC members said they would prefer to move faster on slowing its asset purchases. And again, one more reminder to, to kind of draw the distinction here between slowing its purchases and then reducing its overall purchases. What it's describing here in that $10 billion, uh, $10 billion $5 billion pace is slowing the current purchases that they have. So ultimately, the balance sheet will still be increasing in size, but rather the pace by which it's increasing will slow uh, when they do ultimately commence. That hasn't happened yet. But again, all signs pointing to the Federal Reserve announcing something as soon as that November meeting on inflation expectations. Interestingly, the Federal Reserve at the time appeared to say that the uh, broad measures that they look at didn't appear to point to anything outside of range. Again, that's before that hot CPI print that we got this morning. So we'll see if Fed officials change their tone on that as they head into the next meeting. But it seems like for all intents and purposes, Alexis, uh, all for a green light in that November meeting, barring any sort of other type of change there. But again, Federal Reserve offering a little bit more detail on how they might taper in these uh, FOMC. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. Now, we know the Fed is going to be pulling back. We know the stock market is going to crash. And the crypto teacher told you that. We know that cryptos are going to crash. The crypto teacher told you that. But we also know cryptos are set up to be the solution to inflation. We know we're going to go through hyper deflation because of automation. Technology is going to move out humanity. And then also, guys, we have the Bitcoin futures ETF which we know that's definitely going to be coming, but we also know what? They're just going to be betting on the price. And because we have liquidity, Bitcoin is going to move up, but then they're going to drop it to about $10,000. And remember the crypto teacher told you, because he knows when it comes to the new road order, it's all planned out. Y'all have a wonderful day.
The, the dichotomy, though, on the Kathy Woods view, which is that she's, she believes that there's going to be deflation. At the same time, she's a proponent of crypto. Where, where are you right now? We have a whole screen of all the different cryptocurrencies, uh, effectively, uh, to, your, to your left. I own two of those. So, um, you know, I, for me, and I think uh, Novogratz has come on your show and talked about it, it's a diversification. And I think, you know, what Jamie... What's my left? Yeah, what Jamie Dimon talked about, I mean, gold is kind of worthless, too, and might so silver. I mean, they have some industrial uses, but they're minor. It's a store of value. Right. And what, the reason I own Bitcoin is because the U.S. government and, and every government in the Western Hemisphere is printing money now to the end of time. And this is a finite amount of something. And it's a, it can be traded globally. And people have fiat currencies whether it's in Nigeria, and I'm not picking on Nigeria, I have no idea if they have a fiat currency, or you know Bolivia or wherever, you can move into something that probably has, that the world has accepted as a, as a substitute for gold. And since it's a 18 million float or something like that out of 21, you know, I, I think Bitcoin is, it's the biggest, it may not be the one, it's, it's a dumb coin, it has no real purpose uh, other than a store of value. And it's a little crazily volatile. So Ether, which is right below it, I own some of that. That's a programmable Bitcoin. And then there are tons of other coins that are built off of that system. And, and as, as Larry also mentioned, I've, I've become very interested in the blockchain technology as a whole and the digital ledger, which is going to change everything. It's just we're probably in inning one of, of if the Internet. And I don't know when the Internet started, 1990. Hey, 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 Barry, it'll be the, the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers, and that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID 33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.